children are gathered up to you, and we thank you for the life you blessed us with, allowing us to see a new day, a new week, and a new month. The month of May, the year 2022, as man comes time. We rejoice on my plan to see this day. For we know, who oh God, and now who has brought us to see you have your designs for us for this new day, this new week, this new month. And whether we know them or not, your children, Father, we declare we have accepted all that you have commanded to be for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we thank you for that. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for food. We thank you for drink. All the powers of body and soul, Lord, we thank you for all of them because they came from you. And Father God, we ask, oh God, that all that you have built us with, Lord, let them come to the fore in our lives in this day, day this day, week, this day, more, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so to all this end, we ask for mercy and forgiveness. If we say we have not sinned, then we are just very nice. Mark out our iniquity, O God. For if you do, we will be destroyed. But we choose mercy. We choose forgiveness. We choose plenty of redemption. Father, deliver us from all our iniquities in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Perish all the sins of our lives, be there in thought, word, and deed. Perish them all in the sea of forgetfulness. Don't allow them to ever come before your holy face ever again, O oh God. Don't allow them to ever hurt us. They will try to lie to us that our own spirits. Don't allow that to be our portion. Father, I just let the blood of Jesus Christ be released now. Let that blood flow. Even this moment, that's why I cannot want to do it. Let the blood of Jesus flow here. And wash it with every spot and wrinkle of sin in the life of every brother and every sister. So gather together to this moment. And you behold us. Father, do you not see any sin? Not even a spot or wrinkle of sin. See nothing like that. But rather see us. Dressed in the white linen garment of your sins, the bride of Christ. Let that be a portion of God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And so, Father God, we ask that your spirit, although we are gathered here at this point, let your spirit come down and take complete control of this service. Let that be nothing of man in it. Let it be your spirit. From the beginning to the end, speaking to us, your children, give us full understanding of that which you speak to us today. Let us have revelation of your word. Let it all be stuck into our hearts, into our every existence, that we'll be able to go share this with others, that they may come to the knowledge of who you are, and that which you demand of man at this end time. We thank you, Lord, because we don't have answered this prayer. Bless the deed that we did for God. Amen. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Understand of election, you must understand the full knowledge of God. God from there to election and then unto predestination. We need to have a good understanding of all of this so that what we are discussing. To be clear to each and every one of us. We go ahead and shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Election is one, is one thing that many people, it's not most men, to be honest, because many see God, when we talk about election, they say God is partial. God forgive them for saying so in Jesus' name. I want to believe that none of us here will ever say that. Because it is just not right. It's just not true. So let us be caught in that nonsense. Last something. We try to give definition of election, of foreknowledge, and of predestination. We read a lot of scriptures, but we have to do the same today. Remember, everything starts off from God's fallen. And we try very much to explain this fallen matter. We read from First Peter 1 2, we will be talking that again. Acts 2 20, and Romans 8 28 29. We saw from these scriptures that God, in part of foreknowledge, that God would need to send. We have to send the Savior to redeem man from the fall of the Garden of Eden. And I try to stress as we are closing that song that no single individual, nobody is chosen. Nobody is selected, nobody is foreknown, nobody is predestinated to be saved or lost without his or her personal choice in the matter. His or her personal choice and responsibility in the matter. I gave the scriptures like John 3 16, 
First Timothy 2 4, Second Peter 3 9, Revelation 22 7. Let me just read this quickly. We're not going to waste time. So, those who can read, read John 3 16, First Timothy 2 4, Second Peter 3 9, Revelation 22 7. Quickly. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever delivered in him should not perish. Now, whosoever delivered in him should not perish. You have the last thing that. First Timothy 2 4. Or second. Peter 3, whoever is there, we go to God. Who will have all men to be saved? Who? What can I read? First Timothy 2, 4. Okay. Who will have all men to be saved? Okay. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. You see, God want that all, all persons should be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So it's not as if God is denied it to anyone. It is his wish. That all men should be saved and all men should come to the knowledge of the truth. That is God's plan. That is God's position. So it is up to you, it is up to me. Okay. Second Peter yesterday night. Second the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. As some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us world. Okay. With willing that any should perish. With not willing that any should perish. God is but, not willing that any one of us should perish. But that all should come to repentance. All right, we'll leave it at that. And I told you that for God will never be partial. It will be cruel of you to have respect of persons. Regard one as just, regard the other as not just. God will not do that. Because that would not be divine justice. For one to be chosen by God to be saved and another to be damned. That's not what God is doing. God offers grace to all of us. God's limitations, God's provisions, God's promises, God's warnings of punishment. They are general. They are still to everybody. But all men are invited to choose. You have to choose. They are invited to choose life. That is God's wish. But you try to choose life. Then you are one of everlasting punishment if you do not choose life. So that is why all of us ended last Sunday. And we had uh, two questions which I said we will endeavor to answer, endeavor to answer today because. They came in just as we were finished. The first question, I want to answer the question before I start preaching today. Is it, is it, the question is this, is it possible to have predestination without election? To have predestination without election. 
Is it possible? That is the question. The answer is no. And the question is, why no? You have the question, right? Is it possible to have predestination without election? And the answer is no. It is not possible. And the reason is this. Predestination. Predestination brings to pass that which is already for God and so elected. Predestination brings to pass that which is already for known and so elected. So until there is election, we don't start talking about predestination. Remember what you said last Sunday? That I told you that election looks back to four knowledge. Remember? The election looks back to our predestination looks forward to destiny. So election was in place for predestination to take place. I hope you have understood this. If you have, please just let me talk about admin. I'll raise your question. We'll answer it as we see The second question is fairly long. Please listen. The question says, in all this, now this is all I was saying last Sunday, in all this, why did Elohim before the foundation of the world, see the need to create man, Homo sapiens. Why did Elohim see the need to create man? I want to put that question simply. Why did God bother at all to create man? Why? Why did God to create man? Okay, the question continues. He created angels in different colors, even those that worship him every circle, like the cherub and the seraphs. Is it that only our creation, that is man's creation, will be able to appreciate God's full attributes? in him as Elohim and God ultimately and doing this by allowing man to fall and experience him as a savior and redeeming entity. Let me go, let me answer now. I want to begin to answer by the issue of angels. Oh, the first one is why did God create man at all? Very simple. We'll go back again to creation. Before there was anything called creation. Remember when we were dealing with creation, right, George? Before there was anything called creation, it was only Elohim, the great eternal spirit. The self existent one, the eternal creator. That's the other thing. He and he alone was dwelling. There was no heaven. There was no earth. There was no universe. There was nothing. Only Elohim. But inside of Elohim, 
in his mind were his thoughts. His attributes, all of them, what he wanted. He wanted to be a creator, he wanted to be a father, he wanted to be a savior, he wanted to be a redeemer, he wanted to be a healer. All these were inside of his great mind, and he was still alone. But he was very creator. In other words, he didn't want to be alone any longer. And he has to create whatever is created will be something that is coming from inside of him. So among the things they decide to create, the universe, he wanted to create a place called Earth. He wanted to create Heaven, where would you be a kingdom and he God will be the king? And he wanted to create a place called Earth. And he wanted this Earth to be a replicate kingdom of the kingdom of heaven. That is, he wanted to create also a place in the universe called Earth, which will also be like heaven. Okay. So the question was, what did God need to create first? God, before he, after he first started creating, he wanted want to create the universe. In fact, he wanted to be a creator. So the creation will start. There will be universe. In the universe, there will be heaven. And he will be the king. He will, have, will be a kingdom. He will be the king of that kingdom. And among the things in the universe will be this place called Earth. I wanted the earth to be another kingdom, like the kingdom of heaven. And so there'll have to be somebody of this earth. This earth will be the king of this earth. Operating under the sovereignty of God. That's why when he created Adam, he gave him dominion over the whole earth. Over everything on the earth. You remember, he gave him only dominion. He didn't give him ownership. Adam was never the owner of the earth. He was the governor of the earth. If you like, the king of the earth. He was subject to the control of the king of heaven because the earth was to be like that. You remember our Lord's prayer? Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you can see that relationship between heaven and earth. So that is the reason that God created man to be in charge of that earth. So that's the reason. Okay. He created the angels and so on. Yes, I want to also understand, understand one thing. The angels have no knowledge whatsoever of what is called redemption or salvation. It doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything to them. It's not for them. They are in heaven. Nobody is repenting over anything in heaven. So nobody is expecting salvation in heaven. This is a matter for the earth. Jesus Christ did not come and die and shed his blood for any angel who is in heaven. I hope you understand that, church. He didn't come and die for that. The angel has no need for that. All that is just for the earth. And it's for the earth because, as we see later today, we start preaching, 
If God will be God, will be a father, will be the redeemer, will be a savior, then there will need to be man. And this man will have to sin. This man will have to fall. So that God, the, those, excuse me, those attributes of God will have to come into play. Remember what he said in Revelation 4. This whole creation was only for God's pleasure. Always remember that. For all the grand craft man, all our thinking that we are too much, just remember the creator was for his pleasure. That will show you that we are much to nothing really. We are just thinking that we are something. But we are just for God's own pleasure. If we're able to put that at the back of our minds, it will help us to calm down a little bit about who we think we are. And when a man will not stand and say, I don't care about God, I don't believe in God, and the atheist will say, and the agnostic will say, I don't see any proof, or I need a proof that there is God. Those are the agnostics. They don't say, like if there is if they say, there is no God. Agnostic said, if you say there is God, it was proven to me. I need to be convinced. So those ones are the agnostics. But whatever, when anybody believes the world, there is God. I think it was last night or so. Unfortunately, I didn't follow the name. I saw something on the back of the news that Jupiter and Jupiter and what? Sister Michel. Huh? Jupiter and Mars. Jupiter and what? Jupiter. Two planets. They said they were about to, yes, to touch. How many of you saw it last night? Huh? How many saw it? I just don't know why my mind, I didn't follow it immediately. I was something really good. Anyway, just going through that bar, what came to my Venus and Jupiter, right? Okay. All I just said, my mind goes, huh? Oh, yeah. You don't need you don't to. When the kids will get to the point where they say Venus and Jupiter were almost going to touch. I so, said, well, you don't say something is not working somewhere. I'll try and follow that story for this week. Maybe I can catch it and see if I can make it back to the scriptures. Whatever it is, just know that strange things are happening in the world now. And they are happening because the time of the end is here. Let nobody deceive you that we still have more time. We don't have that time. You know in boxing, come to the final of the ring, final, 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 and then you do so. Because help us to survive it in Jesus' name. If I ask you right now, how many of you are Christians? All hands will go up. And I'm glad that it is so. Because to be a Christian is the happy, we are the happiest people in the world if we know who we are. If you are a Christian, you should be among the happiest person in the among happiest persons in the world. Just believe it. It's not money that makes you happy. It helps you to be comfortable, but that's not that, that that's that's not necessarily happiness. That's also not necessarily 
peace. A lot of people have money, they don't have any peace. Now they have joy. But if you are a Christian, the Christian, you must be among the happiest people in the world. Just believe it. However, before you can be a Christian, one thing is sure, God will have to call you first. You hear me, George? God will have to call you first. Well, you should know what God is calling you. It is not you calling God. It is God who will call you. God called Abraham, the father of faith. It is all a matter of faith. You did by coincidence. You were already a Christian ever before you came into this world. Don't you come pleasure? And then there's another word there called adoption. If you have time, we'll look at it. But put that back, we'll put that word in the back of your mind, adoption. Six, to the praise of the glory of his grace. To the praise of the glory of his grace. When he has made us accepted in the beloved. And then accepted in the beloved. The beloved and then Christ. Okay. So before you and I were born, God ordained us to be Christians right from before the foundation of the world. That's why we read that scripture. Revelation 38. Is anybody there? Revelation 38. Yes. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship. And all that are upon the earth shall worship him. Whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain from the foundation of the world. Slain from the foundation of the world. So if you are a Christian, your name must be in the book of the Lamb. If you are not, then you are going to serve the Antichrist. You are going to worship him. That is why. Right. You will not be among those who worship in the different way. By God's foreknowledge, we know that God knew that Christ would die, that all, I repeat, all might be saved. First Timothy 2 for me, somebody. First Timothy, yes. Who will have all men to be saved uh -huh. and to come unto the knowledge of truth? You see, God will have all men, not some men. God will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Do you see, do you see two things there? Say, truth. 
If you are going to be saved, you must come to the knowledge of the truth. There is no way you are going to be saved when what you have is ignorance. I don't know if you catch what I'm what I'm trying to get across there. Don't tell me you are ignorant and then you say I'm going to rapture. All because you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't fornicate, you don't commit adultery, you don't murder, you don't steal. These are wonderful things that we shouldn't do. May God grant that we shall not do them in Jesus' name. But, but you see that you don't do them, eh? and you are in ignorance, you in the rapture. I've told you before the Hebrew word for darkness is the same word for ignorance. The same word. If you are writing the Hebrew now, speaking Hebrew, if you want to talk about darkness, the word you use, which means darkness, is the same word which means ignorance. And in the same manner, in Hebrew language, the word for light is the same word for knowledge. God wishes that all, 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 I repeat, all men should be saved. However, they must come to the knowledge of the truth. So when you get yourself into a place where all they are teaching you, instead of being God's truth, they begin to teach you denominational creeds and dogmas, uh, and then put a sprinkling of God's word, you have not got the truth of God. You cannot start talking about salvation by the rapture. Just, just remember, we are talking about salvation and preaching the word of God. We are only talking about the rapture. When we begin to talk about salvation, we are talking about salvation of the church. What is the church? The church is the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? The body of Christ is the bride of Christ. So when we are talking about salvation, we are talking about salvation of the bride of Christ. That is what is going in the rapture. You may get angry, it does not matter to me. I pray that you don't get angry, though. But I tell you something if you do not have the word of God for your age, you are ignorant of the person of God for your age, and you are saying you are going in the rapture, you don't go. You are somewhere where the message of God is coming to you, the message for your age. And you are saying, hey, because, you know, where I came from, in my village, in my town, in my state, in my wherever, in my country, and uh, the, 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 the church we have there does not talk about these things. So I want to remain with that one. Fine. I don't have an argument with you. But just know that you will not go in the rapture. I am not saying you are going to hell. Only God that means that. But you will not go in the rapture. And if you do not go in the rapture, it means you are going to come up in the second resurrection. The rapture is what is called the first resurrection. And that first resurrection started when Christ rose from the dead. That's when the first resurrection happened. And it's going to continue until the day of the rapture. So if you are out of the first resurrection, then you are going to wait for the second resurrection. And all of us know that 
first resolution structure, then from the day of rapture, we go to heaven. We spend seven years in heaven for the marriage feast of the bridegroom and the bride. Christ and you and me, nobody say amen. We go to heaven, seven years we'll be there. Then we shall all return to the earth. Christ will destroy the Antichrist and his forces. He will set up the kingdom of heaven on the earth. That prayer, our Father who has the devil, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That is when that kingdom will be set up. It was set up for Adam. He messed with it. Satan took the glory. God sent the son. He had to shed the one blood on the cross of Calvary to get back that which Satan has taken. Getting it back does not mean the establishment of the kingdom yet. So this son of God will have to come back to this earth to sit on his own throne on this earth for the kingdom of heaven to be established. So we go in the rapture, we spend seven years of them, we come down here, beat the African Christ, crush them. Satan and all his demons are bound and thrown into the abyss. And Jesus sets up the kingdom of heaven on earth in answer to that prayer. Our Father who has in heaven, I will be thy name, thy kingdom come. That is when the kingdom comes here. So this kingdom will be here for 1,000 years. You and I, who are the bride of Christ, who are born to heaven with Christ, when we come down and give Christ says of the kingdom of heaven on earth, we are the people who will be in Jerusalem and be ruling this whole earth under the command of Christ. The earth is not destroyed. It is still there. Nigeria will still be there. Ghana will still be there. Germany will still be there. Russia will still be there. Putin will not be destroyed. We don't have time to be killing people in Ukraine again. All of these places will be there. But you and I will not be Nigerians again. Be in Jerusalem. Jerusalem might. That one we shall be by the grace of God in Jesus' name. From there, Jesus will be sending us out because we shall be ruling this earth with Christ. We shall not be in this Yamayama body. We are still talking about pain. Talk about headache, God, all this nonsense thing. We'll not be there. We're the glorified body. The body in which Christ will be in, that is body in which we shall be in. Our names will change. I don't know what name I will be. I don't know what name she will be. But let me just as you say, my name now will be. Uh, when they are doing for myself, I don't know. Okay. And he also sent me to somewhere in uh, Russia. He gives me the instruction what I should go and do there. Then says, Go. As soon as he says, Go, bam, I'm already in Russia. By the speed of thought, I don't need any Maya Manyama aircraft. Who is talking about airports? Airport for what? Something made by man's hands, the crash will be using it for what? Speed of thought. Everywhere you want to go to. That's how we shall move. Now I'm talking about the first resurrection. We shall rule with Christ for what? Thousand years. You who do not have the knowledge 
you will not be there. You will come up in the second resurrection. The second resurrection will come up 1,000 years later. To the exact 1,007 years after rapture. That is when you come. And you will now appear at the white throne judgment. When you appear at the white throne judgment, the other people you will find there, you will see Satan, you will see the demons, they will all be there, yes. 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 They will all be killed. There is no foolish wedding that will be saved. They will be, they will be killed in the first three and a half years after rapture. That is when the Antichrist will be moving. It hasn't got to Jerusalem yet, to Israel yet, but his powers will be all over the place. If you are here and you are joking with what you are saying here, that you leave that matter, oh, leave that matter, that no, too, no, too hard. Continue to say that, too. continue to be careless. The people of Antichrist, they know you already. Some of them are on this street. They know you when you are coming up to church. This we are saying this is annoying the report. You say we know that we know that man, we know that woman. Yeah. That will come and make that promise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Believer, why are you here? Do you accept now that I'm the boss? You tell you about your guy who's antichrist. You ask you to bow to him because you are foolish, virgin. You will not bow. God, being virgin means you are virtuous. Your carelessness in handling the word of God in your life is what has made you foolish, virgin. When they come to you and you say rubbish. Eh? You say rubbish, eh? no problem. Just kill you. Every foolish virgin will die in the first three and a half years when we are in heaven. You know it now. Are you serious with God? Eh? You know what God is saying? And you are saying, I have time. You know that is an old man. That he has enjoyed himself in this. That is asking us to come and begin to behave like an old man like himself. Uh -oh. It cannot be like that. I, I must uh, shake for this one now. All that. So you don't take you know, the word of God seriously. You know the word of God is the church. But you don't take it seriously because you think you have time. That is what is the issue. I still have time. I'm still young. When we are telling you that you are living on extra time right now, you are still saying I have time. How can anybody who is living on extra time say he has time? Does it make sense? When you do that on extra time, you don't see your own finish. You better try and get everything prepared because extra time can end any time. So you are jealous. After strikes. So you will appear at the white throne judgment. Then your brethren, you are worshiping the gospel believer solution, will come and sit in judgment over you. You will appear before that your brother or sister, and he'll be questioning you. Can you imagine the pain in your heart? If not be that carelessness, how sister this could question me? Why? Eh? But that time God, 
My sister was being serious. What about you? Those who now come at white throne judgment, you know, those who are at white throne judgment, huh? you know, you are going to end up in the lake of fire. Only few will escape. Only really few will be dashed salvation from the white throne judgment. Only few. White throne judgment is not sentence you already get. Do you want to appear in the second resurrection? Is that what you want, judge? I said, is that what you want? So you see, the issue is God does not want everybody, God wants everybody to be saved, but they must come to the knowledge of the truth. There's no way you are going to avoid that. You see. And you see. And that is why God says we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Somebody read to me, class 2, 12 to 13. Philippians 2. Wherefore, my beloved. Philippians 2 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The devils, they know Christ. And they tremble. The only difference is that they will not obey. Some of us are exactly like them. We fear. We don't even tremble. And we also don't obey. Our case is even worse than those people. And yet we are in church. And right from church, people are going to hell. Right from church. I don't know of any disaster that is greater than hell. God has his work set out. And he has it set out in all ages. God's foreknowledge has made him to set in the church and in the people certain things that he, God, did at the beginning. And then you have the gospel that has been preached to that age and is revealed to certain people. The rest of them don't see it. What the plan I'm saying to you. The reason why we have problems in this Christian era, beginning from the time of Christ, is that we continue to disbelieve the Bible message. The Bible message is that Christ came back to Patmos Island to meet with John, the revelator, the writer of the book of Revelation. Christ got John for that purpose. At the time that Christ came to John on the island of Patmos, every apostle and major disciple of John Christ was already dead. Did they die by sleeping on their bed? No. All of them completely killed. Only John. It's not because there was no attempt made to kill John. Several attempts, including that famous one 
where they tried to fry him in that big pot of oil that was fired up seven times. And yet, what happened to came out without even any spot of oil on his own. Then they sentenced him, a prohibition of rule sentenced him to that prison island of Patmos. Around 1896. Then Jesus came there. If you go read the Gospel of John, you will see this matter in that place why Jesus was making it known that he was going to keep John. And people thought, he said, John would never die. But John said, this was this is so. He kept him. Why? Because he wanted John to identify him. So that what he's going to say in the book of Revelation, people must believe that it was he, Jesus, who came to give it. If he hadn't kept John, and it was just anybody else that's in that place, they said, the person he sees Jesus, has established Jesus himself before. They kept John. I remember why Jesus was here. John was his favorite apostle, the little boy that was hanging on his breast, on his chest. He kept him alive, and Jesus came there. He came in his own family. That was why, as soon as John saw him, John, John said, I, I fell as dead. Anytime Jesus would appear in the Giovanni, which is talking about the image of God, if you remember what I told you in creation, the first reaction is that he was one, that he died. And then John described him. So he was describing someone that he already was familiar with, he knew very well. So you can't tell me, yeah, I don't know that this is Jesus the Christ, my master. That done, we now explain to John. It is my church, and I'm here to tell you how my church will be. It's going to last 2,000 years. And it's going to organize seven church ages. And put my when I have said that that age is over, I will raise another person again to start the next one. And I'll put my message into that one. And that's how I will do to the last age. So you see, the problem today, this is the seventh and last church age. If you are planning to make rapture in this age, and you think you can make rapture and avoid God's message by his messenger to this church age, think again. If this gets on the internet, there are many. If they're able to watch the video, they will send me a music letter. I do not speak in condemnation of anybody in the church. The word of God is clear. Every age has a message. That message is given by the owner of the church. The owner of the church is Christ. He appoints that messenger to that age. If you belong to that age, what will put you in the bride? Because each of the seven church ages has a bride church. And the bride church of each age is determined by the followership of that message to that age. I don't know if you are catching what I'm saying, church. Huh? So when the last church age, and that is why this same Christ, who is the owner of the church, he took greater steps than he did not take in the 
preceding church ages. He took in this church age to vindicate this message in this age. He never done it in the other ages. Apart from Paul, who lived in the time that the gospel was being was written, all the other messengers to church age, none of them featured in the Bible. Other than, other than we know that they were the messengers to the age. But this last church age, because it's the last call, God in his mercy is saying, try and enter, because there's not going to be anyone after this. He took steps to vindicate this last church age. And that is why Brabrand, Brabrand, we can show him, to, show, him, show, show him to you in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The only thing that is not there is named Brown. Just as if the Bible had ended in uh, Malacca, nobody would have known anybody called John the Baptist. Yet it was in the Bible, in the Old Testament. If the Bible had continued to bring him down, there's no way you can find that out there. They chose to vindicate him. That's why he was sending that light. The same light that did all the things in the Bible. And it got to the point where he allowed the eyes of man to see the light, where he allowed the lenses of the camera to capture the light. All of which was to say, I vindicate this message I have sent. And the emphasis was not on the messenger, it was on the message. As people are saying, it does not matter. What my uh, general officer is saying is all that I need. What my pastor founder is saying is all that I need. What my pope is saying is all that I need. There is no scripture where you can say it is so. But we can tell you the scripture concerning the message of this hour. Therefore, the bride of this hour is going to be decided by how you relate to the message of this hour. You may not like it, but there it is. God will finally show whether he is God or not on that day. You will not be numbered among those who will be disappointed at judgment in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who will not hear what God is saying, this person is hid from them. Matthew 11, 25 to 27, somebody please read. Matthew 11, 25 to 27. At a time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Lord. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast seen these things from the wise and prudence, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son is. I thank thee, O Lord, Father of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from wise and prudence, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seems good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father, save the son, and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. You see, nobody knows the son, and whomsoever the son will reveal him. And the son only reveals him by the son's message to each age. 
And this last Sunday is revealed to this last Sunday message of the hour. See, those who receive it, that's the destination of work then. It's not as if God did it by saying, Oh, I choose Sister Mary. I think I choose for a job. No, that's not what God said. It's only by his full knowledge that he knows what you and I will do. God for you, he called us, he justified us, he glorified. Somebody read me Romans 8 28 to 30. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. For whom he did for them, he also did predestinate to be confirmed, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified. And who he justified, then he also glorified. Amen. You see, it is God's plan that he has foreknown and predestinated, and not the individual conformity of free wills to the plan. It is what God has for those of predestinated, not you, the individual. Your conformity with it is not there. God has called all men, all women, and all of us are free to accept or reject the call. God has called all men and all are free to accept or reject the call. I think we have scriptures for them. Just put the scripture down, you can read that and talk on your own. John 3 16, 1 Timothy 2 4, 2 Peter 3 9, Revelation 22 7. We read that before today. Now, all those who do accept, All those who do accept God has for known and predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. That the son may be the first born among many brethren. Conversely, those who reject this plan of God. God has also foreknown and predestined them to be conformed to hell. You see? Conform you, you accept. You don't accept, you also conform to hell. As an everlasting monument of his wrath or rebels. Check this out in the following scriptures, which you read for yourself at two. Isaiah 66, 22 to 24. Revelation 14. Isaiah 66, 22 to 24. Revelation 14, 9 to 11. Matthew 25, 41 and 46. This is the sum of knowledge and predestination. When the Bible says confirm, He's talking about the resurrected body, 
We be like God and like Christ's glorious body. He says we shall be in the image of his son. Do you remember when we were in creation? I was talking about the image. So that's exactly how we are going to be. This is what God has for you. This is what God has predestinated for all those who conform to the gospel. When we say that God called, God has forgiven, He has determined, and He has predestinated that all men be called to salvation. All men be called to salvation. But that only the ones who accept will become the genuine called. Once, who will then be justified and glorified? In effect, what I'm saying is that none is glorified except those who, according to the purpose of God, meet the terms of the gospel, their terms. You know, when you are doing something, say thanks and condition and uh -huh. So I want to be called, I want to be justified, I want to be glorified. Yes, but thanks and conditions apply. Please. So it's only those, those who be justified and glorified, none is glorified, but those who, according to his God's purpose, meet in terms of the gospel. But who they will be is left to the individual. You are called. Did you answer? So all things depend upon the meeting of the conditions of the gospel. That's exactly what it is. And you can check that out in Romans chapter 1. It verses one to thirteen, and also verse twenty-eight. You see all of that. Yeah. No matter what we talk about, the destination. We talk about full knowledge of God. There is still a part to play, and I want to repeat. Predestination, as I've told you last Sunday, is that effective exercise of the will of God by which things before determined are brought to pass. Always put that at the back of your mind. I think we've talked too much about. For knowledge, I don't know what for knowledge is all about. When a man has been born again by the word of God and is predestinated to eternal life, you see now, you are elected. So, what does predestination do? Election is in place. Now, through predestination, you now attain the destiny of eternal life. That's why we say to you, predestination looks forward to destiny. Election looks back to foreknowledge. All right? When you're in that state of your life, one thing you will notice is that for you, it will be word upon word upon word. It will never be a denominational creed. And a word, and then a creed, and a word. No. 
it will be one upon one upon one upon one. What you see today, you see, they have the one, then they add the international grid, add another document, add word again, and that's how they do. And mixing all of these things. That is never going to put you in that predestinated position. It just won't work. You can't have it that way. For there's only one eternal life. And Jesus Christ is that eternal life. And Jesus Christ is the world. So anybody thinking that we can join things up. There's no way it's going to work. The word of God is the incorruptible seed. And I'm sure you all remember that the word of God is a seed. There's a bride, and the bride is elected. And the bride is called by the election. And these types the church. The types the church perfectly. What is the church? The church is a body of elected believers. That is what is the church. Anybody who is not among that group elected believers is not in the church and is regarded as not being a believer. You know, today we use the word church so loosely. But when we talk about church, we are talking about the bright church. We are talking about the church of Christ. That book of where he said in Matthew 16, I will be my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. If you are in that church, you are part of the Christ. If you are not in that church, you are not a believer. It's as simple as that. And we may call the church God. If you prefer that, if you want to see church record to you, to you then could you call it church God. But for those who are called, who are the elect, they belong to the bride church. And they are the bride of Christ. And that, of course, is by election. You, uh, you believe, the others you don't believe. You see, those who went on evangelism yesterday, the three of them, they met a man. The man did you know, everything they said, the man said no. The one they put on to you say, eh, is that so? The way you want to tell him something, you say, no, 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 I don't know about that. You say, how much do you know? He doesn't know. This is the problem. When they get caught up in the professional spirit, you bring the word of God to them, you show them the word of God, you explain it to them, you prove it to them. You show that what is indicated. At the end of it all, they say, but I don't believe it. And what does Jesus Christ say concerning some people? Jesus Christ says, don't leave them in those. Matthew 7, 6, somebody that quickly see, see the Jesus Christ is talking to and Matthew 15, 13, 14, 13 to 14 as well. 
Give not that which you hold me unto the dogs. Uh-huh. Neither tax ye your pearls before the swine. You see? Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. You see? If you, they'll turn again and they'll tear you to pieces. Matthew 15, 13 to 14. Matthew 15, 13 to 14. Mm-hmm. For he answered and said, Every plant which my Matthew 13. Matthew 15, 13 to 14. Yes. For he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted off. Let them alone, they be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Exactly. You see, that's the point. And there are some places where you go there, they want to force you to be done to be judged. No, that is wrong. That is bad enough. My brother said that's bad enough. In Christ, you come in to the church by election, not by force. Your heart pulls you in. God calls us by election. Let me quote something that Brown said. The anti people here know that something in your heart. Talking, something your heart is talking, your heart is talking. I want that Holy Spirit. I want you love in my heart. That's because God put your name on the last book of life before the foundation of the world. He said, No man can come to me except my father has drawn me to Christ. And all that come to me, to me, I'll give them eternal life. So you see. Christ will bring eternal life to only those who come to him. And those who come to him, to him the Father will come to send them to him. And those are sure, as so are hungry for the Holy Spirit this morning. It's something in you that is pulling you. Pulling you. That's the purpose of God in your life as God to fulfill. This, as, as we are saying these things, you are feeling something inside of your heart and it's pulling you and you are saying, ah, I think I will do something about like what this one is saying. Then you know it is not you. It's the Spirit of God is trying to do something in your life. And all you have to do is just listen. When you listen, you see what God will do. Somebody read me Philippians 3, 20 to 21. For our compassion is in heaven, from whence also we look for the same. Compassion. Our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to give to subdue all things into himself. You see, our citizenship is in heaven. That is what he's saying to you today. Our citizenship is in heaven. And there, we will have to be like him. And the one we are like him, Everything will just right. We will know God as He is because we shall be like Him also. Our bodies will be like His own body. That is how we know that we are with Christ. 
Christ. If you are really tired of God, there will be something inside of you, even right now, that you need to cry out, God, take so and so away from me, circumcise me from this and that, take these things away from me. It is needed for your heavenly hope that you are going to. We have Christ has come to prepare for you. You have got to be a real world bride. I want you to know that the bride is still the elect of God. The church goes through tribulation. Inside of the church, as we are here today, some of us will go in the rapture. What is that of the church is going to pass through tribulation. That is just the simple truth. That's why the Bible in Revelation 22 17 says, Whosoever we let him come. But that does not apply to the bride. But the bride is the elect of God. Now I want you to know there are various elects of God. I want to give you four. It's not just us in the church only, Christians only. The various elects of God, I will not read the scriptures, you can read them at home. First, we are talking about the various elects of God. First, I think that should be clear to everyone of us. The first is Christ Himself. And for that, you can check that out in Isaiah 42, verse 1, and 1 Peter 2, verse 6. Isaiah 42, verse 1. 1 Peter 2, verse 6. I'm talking about the legs of God. Number one, Christ. Number two, Christians. Christians are also the legs of God. Let me give scriptures. That's where you find most of the scriptures. Christians, John 15, 16. John 15, 16, Romans 8, 33, Romans 8, 33, Ephesians 1, 4, Ephesians 1, 4, Ephesians 2, 10, Ephesians 2, 10, Colossians 3, 12, Colossians 3, 12, 2 Thessalonians 2.13, 2 Thessalonians 2.13, Titus 1.1, 1, 1. Titus 1.1, 1, 1. 2 John 1 and 13, 2 John 1 and 13, the 2 John is only one chapter, 2 John 1 and 13. So that's a second example of the left. First was Christ, second the Christians. Third, Israel. Israel. That's another elect of God. Take the scriptures as well. Isaiah 45, verse 4. Isaiah 45, 4. Isaiah 65, 9.22, Matthew 24, verses 22, 24, and 31. Matthew 24, verses 22, 24, and 31. Mark 13, Mark 13, Verses 22 and 27. Mark 13, verses 22 and 27. And 1 Peter 1 2. 1 Peter 1 2. So we have Christ, 
you have Christians, you have Israel. These are the best of God. There's one more. The last one, angels. Angels. That's why First Timothy 5. First Timothy 5. Verse 21. First Timothy 5. Verse 21. So those are the four groups under the election of God. Christ, Christians, Israel, and angels. Anyone chosen of God at any time, Jew or Gentile, is the elect of God. Anyone chosen of God at any time, Jew or Gentile, is the elect of God. Anyone chosen at any time, Jew or Gentile, is the elect of God. Take the scriptures for that. Romans 9, 11. Romans 9, 11. Romans 11, 5, 7, and 28. Romans 11, 5, 7, 28. The first Thessalonians 1, 14. First Thessalonians 1, 14. And first Peter 5, 13. First Peter 5, 13. Remember, all men are called to become God's elect or chosen ones. And they can be if they will choose God. All men, and of course women, are called to become God's elect or chosen ones, and they can be if they will choose God. The scriptures for that, Ephesians 1, verse 4, Ephesians 1, verse 4, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13, Revelation 17, verse 14. The elect of God will hunger and thirst only for the fresh manner of the world that is revealed in the age that they are living in. The elect of God will hunger and thirst only for the fresh manner of the world that is revealed in the age that they are living in. And this, I can say to you now, is that one. Our prayer is that you should receive it. Just remember that God foreknew all things from the very beginning, and that He foreknew each and every one of us even before the foundation of the world. Yes, the Bible said it, that God is infinite. His infinite, his omnipotent. God for new every night. You know these small, small uh, uh, insects that fly about. Every fly, every sparrow, and every man that will ever be born on the face of this earth. God already for new all of us. God can hear our prayers even before we open our mouths. The hairs on our head, God has numbered, and they have engraved our name on the palm of his hand. We are seen from Ephesians 1, 5 to 6, that God has predestinated us according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace. And where we are today in Romans 8:30. The Bible says, whom we give predestinate, then we also call, and whom we call, then we also justify, and who we justify, then we also glorify. The beauty is that all of this is in past tense. He has already done them. And their names were written in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world.
you know that the fall of man in the Garden of Eden was by God's permissive way. Always remember that. The fall of man, Garden of Eden, was by God's permissive way. That may be strange to, to you to hear, but it is true. God permitted sin to happen in order for him to display his great attributes of being a savior and a redeemer. He allowed Adam and Eve to be deceived by the serpent in order to make way for his great redemptive plan of salvation. God himself wanted to be glorified as a savior. And if there was nobody to be saved in the first place, why would they be a savior? Therefore, they had to be sinners before he could ever display his attribute of being a savior. In the same manner, he had to create sons and daughters if he has to be a father. Man's existence and fall, therefore, had made God both Father and Savior to us and the blessed Redeemer as well. In order for him to be God, God knew who and who will be saved. I want to tell you about Esau and Jacob. When you read Romans, someone read me Romans 9, 11 to 16, please put it. Romans 9, 11 to 16. Romans 9, 11 to 16. For the children may not get born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that collects. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Okay. I just want to say this point that there is no unrighteousness with God. If he sees the disposition of the two boys, Esau and Esau and uh, eh? Esau and Jacob, there is no righteousness there. The God has already seen their disposition. What they will be. And so God chooses based or what you can foresee in the case of each boy. That is why we have to be very careful when we continue to say to people, every child that dies goes to heaven. It's not true. You have to first of all take into consideration what does God know about that child? As we said last Sunday, Easter was a good one. Jacob was a crook, a deceiver. But God knew what their disposition would be towards him and towards his world. And so while they are still in the womb of their mother, God said, Israel hid Jacob and love. Does that make God unrighteous? No, certainly not. It is for knowledge that, it, that it, you see the national there. It is the same thing that God did with Israel. They were continually, continually repelling against him. And God knew that the Gentiles would not. According to therefore, God started looking in the direction of the Gentiles. Does that make God unrighteous? No. God was all responsible for the act of Esau and Jacob. 
God was not responsible for their act. It was purely Jesus and Jacob's act. And that's what determines who each one will be and where each one will go. It was their disposition, the lives of those boys. And that's something that God has set this one apart now for this 1,800 years of their about because of what they have done. Let's get it very clear. God is sovereign over his mercy. He has laid down his terms. God has laid down his terms for mercy. His terms for mercy and compassion, they are clearly laid down. And he will not dispense with them either until men meet his terms. You and I have to meet those terms. He will not say one soul without repentance and continued conformity to his will. No, he will not say one soul. He cannot save a soul who has no repentance. Who does not conform to his will? He can't do that. No. He will also not damn any soul that is repentant and is conforming to his will. Everything will depend on what you are doing. Let's get it very clear. Jesus Christ came into this world, yes, for only one specific purpose. That is to save and redeem God. God for you, those will be saved and not the whole of the world. This is difficult to say, but you know, in John 17, 9, 9 to 10, the Bible says, I pray for them. Now Jesus saying this, you know that long prayer of Jesus, chapter 17 of John, very important chapter. Jesus said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Jesus said, I pray not for the world. I pray for them, but I pray not for the world. But for them whom thou hast given me. Talking to his father, remember? For they are thine, and all mine are thine. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So we know what origin means. Is to take back, to buy back what was originally God's room. That's exactly what this was did by his death of the cross. But he did it only for those whose names were written in the last book of life, last book of life before the foundation of the world. Jesus could never redeem the children of the devil. They have to be very clear about that. They are not of God, and so Jesus Christ did not come to die for them. This children of the devil were simply predestinated unto damnation, and were created for that purpose. God has known them for that, how they are going to choose, and therefore, that is where they are going to end. This may be that hard saying, but that's what the Bible says. Do you remember when we are doing communion? When we are talking about the wine, then this wine, it shall be shed for all, then this blood, it shall be shed for all men. Is that what the Bible says? For many, never for all. Only for those who are called. Only for those who are chosen. And you want to argue, but the question is, can the pot begin to complain? Can the pot begin to complain what the potter is going to use the to, to produce? Can it? No. You see? So when you talk about Judas, Kim, Fioro, Balaam, all of these people, they play their significant part as God's enemies. We know that. How can the pot say to the potter, why has that made me dust? 
And though the part of power over the place to bring forth their structure, honor, and other things, honor, and reading from Romans 8, Romans 9 21. This was pertained to predestination. God raises evil to fulfill his glorious purpose. God raises evil to fulfill his glorious purpose. His greater, his glorious purpose of the greater good. His glorious purpose of the greater good. You can see that in Isaiah 45, 7. In Isaiah 45, 7, God says to Isaiah, I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I do not do all these things. You must know one thing for sure, but that when we are talking about election and predestination, is that the gospel is hid to them that are lost. Listen to Luke 10, 21. Luke 10, 21 says, I tell thee, Father, O Lord of heaven and earth, for thou hast hid these things from the eyes of the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Therefore, God's eternal gospel is revealed unto, only unto the elect of God. God hid it from all believers, because they will trample it underfoot. They say, What nonsense are you talking about? In this land, we did not say that Jesus never died. The Sanctuary was in fact part of the spectators on the day of crucifixion. Jesus was there watching the man they put on the cross and, and laughing and saying, yeah, They think that me, then they crucify you. That is, that is not. Can you imagine? So you can see the gospel is not meant for this kind of people. Your salvation, my salvation, these are truly dependent upon God's choosing and approval. Well, if there is no Satan, how are you going to know who is good and who is bad? Some of us say, why did God just kill Satan? When Satan rebelled, why did God kill him? This question, a brother asked Nazim, does it mean Satan is working for God? So imagine, if God had killed Satan, yeah? how would you know the unbeliever today? And the believer. Do you know that in the millennium, Satan is bound and is put in hell and all the demons? There's nobody troubling the world again at that time. So there will be peace. Everybody will know God by his Christ. Everybody will know the word of God. But listen, when you read Revelation 20, at the end of 1,000 years, as soon as Satan is released, what does the Bible say? He moved immediately and started talking to him. Hey, no, no. All these people have been playing goody goody all this time. Many of them followed Satan. The Bible says their number was like sand. Yes, while Satan was under the in there, all of them were behaving like they were angels. So do you understand that why God would kill Satan when he rebelled? You have to leave him to use him to prove those who are his and those who are not his. So as salvation. It's really dependent on God's choosing and approval. That's why Romans 9 16 says, It's not him that will it or him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. It's called our salvation. Truly is dependent on God's choosing and approval. Apostle Paul. 
First, in Second Corinthians 4 3, we wrote, Many will be called, but only very few are chosen. Sincerity, I want to stress this to everybody. You can be very sincere, no question about that. There are many people I talk today who are very sincere. But you see, sincerity and just being religious, these are not enough. The Pharisees were sincere. The Pharisees were very religious. Even the Sadducees as well. But they were sincerely wrong. They spent all their lives studying God in the synagogues. But when that same Messiah they were studying about in the synagogue, when he came among them, what did they say? They called him Beelzebub, Prince of the Devils. So you can see, and they went on to crucify him. It is not meant for them. The Bible says, not everyone that said to me, not God, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that in Matthew 7, 21, for he that doeth the will of my Father. I'm sure of you know that we are not saved by our good works or by any personal merit. We are not saved by our good works, any personal merit of ours. No. No, that is not true. We are only saved by faith in the finished atonement of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Creation represents salvation, redemption, born again Christian, once and serve the life of the world. That's the only reason why you were elected. That's all. Why? Because that will not make you a member of that kingdom of heaven when it is set up on this earth. So you have to pass through all of this to earn, so to speak, that degree, that qualification. So when that kingdom is settled, you will be part of it. And therefore that means you will now live eternally. So that is why. Um, did you hear the question? Huh? Did you hear the question? Please repeat the question. Is it true to say that man's creation, is it true to say that man's creation, existence, existence salvation, salvation, and redemption as a born again Christian, wants and peace to serve the divine purpose of Elohim? Wants and peace to serve the divine purpose of Elohim? God. God. Yes, sir. Because remember, God created the universe. He created the earth among the universe. What he created the earth and put man there, man was to live eternally with God. You must understand that. Man was to live eternally with God. Adam was created an eternal creature. Adam was created not to die. But God, being the omniscient God, who knows the end from the beginning, this is Elohim, who had proposed in his mind that he would be a savior and redeemer. He knew that for him to be so, there will have to be a fall. And from that time in eternity, was the Elohim, he had permitted that Adam and Eve will fall. He's not the one that says they will fall. Do you understand, church? He didn't say they must fall. But he knew that they will fall. Why? Because 
the condition which God created beings, angels and human beings, is on this basis of uh, free moral agents. You will have to choose to be on God's side or not to be on his side. He created you, created Adam and Eve to be eternal creatures. But they have to pass the test. Terms and conditions must apply. And they'll be the ones to choose. But God knew that when they were making that choice, they will make the wrong choice. And because they will make the wrong choice, sin will come, and then God will be able to activate his attribute of redeemer and savior. But at the end of it all, because God's word can never fail, God's word can, God's word can never change. God will still have his head in which will be people by people who are eternal beings. So when we are talking about this calling and election and predestination is arising from the sin in the Garden of Eden, God has now played the role through Christ of a redeemer and a savior. But already the world was already corrupted. So people will have to be cleared off so that the world will not finally become as it was the time of Adam and Eve when they were created, there was no question of sin there. They were pure. They were eternal beings. So we will not get to that stage. First, get the kingdom of heaven back on earth. Is it, that is a kind of garden of Eden, but not fully well. We'll get back to the garden of Eden after the white throne judgment. When we go back into uh, eternity, then we shall be back to the Garden of Eden. All right? Okay. We close in another five minutes. Please, God. God's elected few will be able to receive the full understanding of the mysteries that are in the scriptures. Others who are not will simply continue to hold on to man made dogmas and creeds, rituals, and religious traditions to make their own salvation. But Christ said to them, In vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. In another place, Bible says they are seen the way that is right with man, but the end thereof. Is the ways of death. It's always death to trust in the sinking sons of man's ideas. But the elect of God will only walk in the way of God's Bible. The elect of God will hunger thirst only for the fresh manner of the world. As I've already told you, the world. The way they are living in. I want to say something about what Brabram said, and then we'll close. Brabram said, Is the elected whom God, before the foundation of the world, had seen every one of them, and he sent Jesus to redeem. This election people, he did not send him to redeem the whole world. He wanted to, but he had to make a way for those who will choose him. And the only way he could do was to send Christ, that he might come, become the propitiation of our sins for those who elect him, so that they will come to him in glory. All of us, whom God has predestinated, He knew us whom by name before the foundation of the world. If you are saved, you are saved. But if God knows, if God saves you tonight, 
knowing that it's going to lose you in 10 years' time. Why would God do that? He cannot do that. Because that only shows he doesn't know the end right at the beginning. So you are saved right at the beginning. And you are always saved. Christ came to die for those that God has ordained to eternal life. By his fatherless, God saw them not by his own will. I want you to catch something I'm saying here. God saw these people that they are saved by his fatherless. He saw them as saved, but not by his own will. This is foreknowledge. That's what they must say. God's will is that they should not be lost. The will of God is that they should not be lost. Do you understand? Eh? I say, eh? I want to show two things here. God's foreknowledge and his will. By God's foreknowledge, he saw those who are ordained to life. Jesus came to die for them. Those who are doomed to die. But for God's fallen, he saw them. But not by his will. It's his fallen. He saw them. But his will is not that they will be lost. His will is that they should not be lost. Do you understand? God's will is that none should perish. That's his will, that none should perish. Yes? Huh? Okay, I don't have this money. My question is that yes. I don't want to have to our parents. Who are no before the, okay. The okay, so what happened to them? Yes, sir. Fine. They will not be lost. God will judge them based on how they live their lives. Do you realize that there's something called conscience in every one of us? Yes. Yeah? No matter who you are, you have a conscience, and your conscience tells you what is right and what is wrong. There are some parts of the world today that gospel has not known it. Some people live in some unbelievable jungles where man, civilization has not known that they don't go there. They are still moving naked, moving about naked. And yet they are not misbehaving. They are not lost. When they have lived such pious lives, following their conscience, God is not going to send, 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 send them to hell. It's a just God. The only thing that is certain is that they will not be in the rapture. You understand that? They will not be in the rapture. The rapture is for the bride of Christ, this bride of Christ is the world bride. World bride. In other words, they are bride because they are clothed in the word of God. If you listen to when I pray before I start, I pray that God should look at us and see us clothed in the bride of in the clothing of God's bride. They will not go, they will not perish in the lake of fire, provided they live according to their conscience and live right. God may dash them salvation, but they will come up through the white throne judgment. You understand now? Huh? Is it clear now? Okay. So God came to die for them. Whom you are doing to eternal life. Therefore, I want you to know one thing. 
As long as there are still born men in the Lamb's Book of Life, as long as there are still born men in the Lamb's Book of Life that has not yet come in, you know what I mean by coming? That is still busy in the world. We are gonna hear other the number of this person to rise up to. Before we got the call to come to believe this message, were we not living what we have like? I'm not, not the one preaching to you now. When I look back and see what I was doing before, I just wonder, if God will still come to soon after all those things. So for as long as there is still one person, I didn't say two, as long as there is one person on this earth, whose name is in the Lamb's book of life, and he has not yet come in, he has not received his call, or he's got his call, and has working to that call, to answer the call. As long as there's still that one person remaining, Christ will continue to remain on the mercy seat. His blood still atoning for our sins. Is that clear to you, church? Just because of that one person. But the day that last name, the day that last name comes in, that name, the last book of life, the day that name, that last name comes in, that day Jesus rises from the mercy seat. That very moment, he rises from the mercy seat. And he will never, forever and ever, go back to that mercy seat. That blood will cease to flow. There will be no more blood for propitiation for our sins. And that mercy seat automatically will become judgment seat. Do you catch it, George? So, all that Christ is looking for now is that that one name. That one name, that one name that is remaining. Today, I cannot say that it's remaining only one name. But church, what if today it actually remains one name? I want all of us to think about it. What if today it now remains only one name? And that name comes in tonight. If that name comes in tonight, the rapture will take place tonight. I ask you, as I ask myself, are you ready? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to say, yes, God, let that last name come in today, this night. Let him come in this night. I'm okay, God. If you are not sure, if you are not able to say to God, come in, then be very careful. Because the time to go home is near. Christ was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Remember that Jesus Christ said he knew us. He knew you and me even before the foundation of the world. We were predestinated unto adoption. And that thing, adoption, means so much. Is the last thing that will happen to the bride of Christ. We don't have the time to talk about adoption today. I pray that I remember someday that I will treat that topic, adoption. The last thing that will happen 
to the bride of Christ. You and I will have to be adopted. Yes, we are called. Yes, we are saved. We still need, we still have to be adopted. You will see adoption as well in the future in the book of Romans. The epistle to the Romans. You see there, and you see the first uh, chapter of the epistles. The wheels are turning, everything is turning, and they're all getting to a close. Let's be serious. Let us get ready. If you are sure you are born to the world of God and have been chosen, so get ready to come to go to Seattle. The Holy Spirit is moving around now. He's seeking out the bride of Christ wherever they are. He's gathering them together. One of these days, that light will shine. And all those who are his, they will see it. And they will gather. In the book of Jude, the pastor are going to Jude, you see where it is written very clearly that some men were ordained, for ordained unto condemnation. Very clearly written there. The question is. Are you one of those for the to condemnation? If you are not, then let your life show that it is so. You may disagree what I'm going to tell you now as we close, but it is so. Your prayers, your fastings, your repentance, your prayer, your fasting, your repentance. All these things that we present to God, our prayer, our fasting, our repentance, and what I do. None of that will gain for you and for me the privilege of sitting on the throne of Christ. Remember, Jesus said to us that he obeyed his father, and so he's sitting, he's sitting with the father on his throne in heaven. And he said, even so, if we obey him too, he will allow us to sit with him on his throne. The throne of Jesus Christ is not in heaven. The throne of Jesus Christ is here on earth. The throne of his father, the spiritual father, David. And here the prophet says, our prayers, our fastings, our repentance. So no matter all this food I present to God, none of them will get the privilege of sitting on that throne. Unless you belong to the bride of Christ. And if you belong to the bride of Christ, then it means you are feeding on the word of Christ for the age in which you belong. And this age, that means the age where you and I are today. So, we close now, and I say to you, what is it like in your heart? What is it like in your spirit? We need to work on these thoughts Hear me well. My heart must be changed. I will say another sentence after this. My heart must be changed. My spirit must be changed. So would you. Your heart must be changed. Your spirit must be changed. So that the spirit of God can come in. You remember we did this some time ago and we spent quite some time on it. 
God requires my heart to be changed. He requires your heart to be changed. As your heart is changed, as my heart is changed, it begins to affect my spirit. It begins to affect your spirit. Remember, your spirit, my spirit, gives us self-consciousness. You know that is where you have those five senses. Uh, imagination, reason, conscience, what are the other things? Emotion and affection. Imagination, conscience, reason, affection, and uh, what was the last one? That's affection, reason, conscience, imagination. That's what we're talking about. Those five, then the soul. Our spirit gives us God consciousness. Our body. It's about world consciousness. Our soul is about spirit consciousness. Sorry, our soul is about self consciousness. And spirit is about God consciousness. So our heart needs to change to receive a new heart. A heart that does not have anger, that does not have hatred, that does not have backbiting, that does not have backstabbing, that does not have quarrel, that does not have hatred, that does not have resentment. A heart that is not hypocritical. How that does not see any good in anybody else except ourselves. The heart that is loving, always ready to forgive, no matter the heart. This is the heart of somebody who can claim that he is called, he is chosen, and he belongs to the elect of Christ. Is your heart like that? If your heart is not like that, there's still work to be done. Because until that heart is made ready like that, your spirit cannot change. And your spirit has to change before the Holy Spirit will now come and tap on that code inside there, thereby confirming you sure as the bride of Christ. And therefore you know that you have made your calling an election show. Do you catch it now? How you make your calling an election show? Look at what the stages you have to pass through in order to make your calling an election show. It is not because you come to church. It's not good as it is to come to church. It's not because you fast. It's not because you pray. What's the purpose of fasting? When you are still nurturing anger against your brother or sister in the church there where you are. What's the purpose of praying? When you are not ready to forgive the person who has hurt you. What's the purpose of praying? When you know that there's a brother there who is hungry. And he comes to him and says, Brother, I haven't fed with my family now for three days. I said, Brother, let us meet them now. You have five, uh, five bags of rice, 10 bags of garlic in your house. You have all the facilities and drug of say, I'm 
We are not eating from three days. Die. This cannot happen to you. We are ego. No, brother, let's let's, let's do it now. We call the Almighty in the name of Christ Jesus. We call it now. Your children cannot be hungry. There's no need to pray. You know the will of God already. The will of God is give him the food that you have. What are you praying for? You find out from which will of God you want to find out. He's already there. He's put it in your, in your, in your store. Just call your wife to begin to, to produce. How are you the, the bride of Christ? When they call you, let's come and settle this question. That, that, what he did to me, what she did to me, there's no way. We are carrying this thing to heaven. Which heaven are you carrying to? In heaven, they don't settle corners. There are peace in heaven. Nobody has a single frown on this or her face in heaven. That is why you cannot find wrinkle in heaven. No way. We must settle all of that here. Yeah. If we say we have been called, we have been chosen, justified, and at the time of the rapture, glorified. How are we going to be glorified? When we are glorified, it means we shall be cast in the image of Christ. What is the image of Christ? When God and him, that day that he said to speak creation into existence, that image that came out that day, that logos, we are going into that one, and you not think you can go into it with all this anger, with all this wickedness and all of these things, and then you say, I am the image of Christ. Is that possible? Do you have any such in the image of Christ? Never. So, this is what this matter is all about. I told you, Christ is waiting for the last man whose name in the Lamb's Book of Life. The day that, man, that last man comes in, if it is this night, the rattle will strike this night. First of May, who knows what will happen by the first of May? With that last name coming, and don't sit there and say to me that no, it's not going to happen yet. Ah, I don't have money now. Eh? I don't have born. Yeah, in fact, I have only one child yet. I think there are two or three. No, even my car is not ready yet. I don't have my own house. What does that got to do with God? Get ready, church. You know when they want to do sprinting? Say, all your marks. The next one is set. And any moment there, you hear the gong. Go. Go panic. The relay race is on. The first leg has handed over to the second leg. The second leg has handed over to the third leg. The third leg, I tell you, church, has handed over to the fourth leg. The fourth leg is now running to the deep, to press the deep. That is where you are. That's where I am. That day is near. May God help us to remember that. Whether we like it or not, it will happen. Run quickly and get him so that you can be among the bride of Christ. That you will know that eternity is for you. I pray that that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you for today. We thank, thank you, God, for what you have done to us by sharing your word with us. We thank you for your spirit that has spoken to us today. Father, may all that you have said to us today not be lost to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, all these things that your spirit gave to us today, in your own way, my Father, my God, have them stamped into our hearts, into our very being, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
take worldliness out of our lives, go God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to be able to tame the flesh. This flesh that is a big problem to all of us. Father, help us to tame it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Help us to remember always that the time to go is not only there, but it is here. And at any moment now, the rapture is right. May we never lose my God in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, it's so grateful God to make us the world bright. Clothe us, O oh God, in that white lady dress of your bride. That whatever time the bridegroom comes to take his bride away with him, for the marriage supper in heaven. That was to be among those who will partake of that in the mighty name of Jehovah. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because we have answered this prayer. Take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the admiration, take all the thanks. For in Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. I pull up, Lord, come down and show us thy blessing. For the time to favor thy I will claim with you, Lord, and commit them to your hand. That is really the time to favor us in all of them. For here is the set time is come. Lord, we will not set the time. And when you set it, it does not fail. It does not change. Here are our prayers, Lord. And number us and ask those. Whose time has come for you to answer our prayers? All matters we have committed to you, both in the spiritual and temporal realms. Bring it about so, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Receive the prostate in this. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. Let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. And lift his countenance upon you. The Lord bless you, his children, his blessed peace. Amen. The grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.